Hey guys, welcome to a Corporation Laboratory video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to write or build a decentralized application on the Archain platform. Before we go into building the application, I would like to say a little thing about the Corporation Laboratory Collab. The Corporation Laboratory is a community of individuals that are cooperating to become um, to become proficient in the emerging technologies surrounding our chain. What this means is that we have work studies where we work on activities such as functional programming, where we write Roland codes. Now, Roland is the language of our chain or the programming language of our chain, where we run our chain nodes, we build a decentralized application and libraries such as GraphQL libraries, web applications, um, Discord bots and also produce video tutorials such as this. Now the benefits of Colab are that you, you get to create value or um, create value for the Archain Cooperative. Also you get to grow your skills and um, you have access to educational resources and also you earn bounties from team participation and idea generation. You can see our Discord server which we use in coordinating our activities. Also, you could join us for work studies on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays at 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. GMT. And you can also see on the screen a Zoom link to our work study sessions. Back to the tutorial. What you're going to learn today is how to install and run our node, how to write de and deploy Roland contracts to our node, and how to deploy a Roland code from a JavaScript interface to run an R node instance using the our chain API. The requirements for this course or this crash course as the R node software you can see a link to download right there on your screen. Node.js and the node package manager, the R chain API and the text editor. Now for this for this tutorial we will be using the version 6.3 since it's more compatible with the application that we're building. So in the releases, you would see other more recent versions that you could also work with. Now you can see on the screen um, the application that we're going to build. Here you could impute data and click a button which should trigger a deploy and propose command. We could register and also call a particular contract. And then if I go to my terminal, you should see the contract deployed. Now, I would recommend that you're using a Mac operating system or a Linux operating system, preferably the Ubuntu distribution of Linux, as our node does not yet support the Windows operating system. And if, even if you're a Windows user, then um, you have to get a vector box that could run Linux on your machine for you to be able to successfully run our node. Although there's an option of running our node on Docker for Windows, but I wouldn't advise you to do that. It's not yet very stable. Okay, I am going to grab the link here. Copy link address and open up a terminal. Do a we get paste the link and then install or download rather the our node software. So after download to so install the R node software, you say apt or sudo apt install R node 6.3. To check the version, you could easily say R node version. It should give you the version number that is 0.6.3. So we have successfully installed R node on our machine. In case you don't have them, is to install the Node.js and the Nodes Package Manager. So then um, open the terminal. You have to create a project folder. Personally, I already have a project folder, so I'm just going to CD into my Roland Projects folder. Create a new directory for the project and color game. Also, CD or change directory into the new folder we just created. And we're going to do an npm in it, which should set up our package.json file. The name of our application is nth-color-game, version, description, a demo, our chain, 
DAP. Entry points, I prefer to call mine app.js, you could also call yours server.js or main.js if, if you desire. The rest of the fields, you could leave them blank. So there we have our package.json file. Open our text editor. And locate the folder of the application we just created. Okay, open up your package.json file. We could see the same script we created from the command line here. Okay, what I'm going to do now is to set up our dependencies. You could also do this from the command line, but I prefer doing mine directly in the code editor since it's much easier and faster to do that way. So the first dependency we're going to require is the express dependency. Express. And then if, if you know the uh, current or latest or the version that you desire to use for this for your project, then you could impute that in. I want us to grab the latest version, so I'm going to use an asterisk for that, so that NPM automatically gets us the latest version of Espress. So another dependency we're going to be using is the body parser. We're also going to do the same thing for the body parser. We're going to get the latest version of it. The third dependency we're going to be requiring is the gRPC. We're also going to get the latest gRPC. And finally, we're going to require the rchain API. For this, you'll need to grab the link on GitHub for the Archain API. Once you grab the link, you go back to your text editor and paste it here. So I'm going to go back to my terminal now and do an npm install of all our dependencies. So you can see the node modules that we have successfully installed representing the dependencies. And a double L, yeah. So in this contract, we're going to have a contract end color factory that should hold the records for the name of the game and the number to be called. Also, we should have a contract game ID that should hold the name of the player and also a return channel. And um, we should also have a conditioner that holds, rec that prints out um, a winning result or a try again result. So now I'm going to write a persistent receive for game ID and number at the nth color factory channel. Now this is one way you could write a persistent receive. What is more common is using contract which is the syntactic sugar for writing persistent receives. So that's what we're going to be doing now. We'll have the contract at nth color factory listening for game ID and the number to be called. So the very first thing we're going to do inside this is to have an unforgeable name, new count channel, and then set the default count to one. Okay, now we're going to create a second contract, which is the game ID that holds that should hold the record for the name of the player and the results and the result. So now we're going to listen for the old count on the count channel. Old count. The count channel. And then set a conditional that should say if the number that is called is equal to the old count. 
then the result should be a success message that says congrats the name concatenation of the name you win else you should say results sorry also concatenation of the name please try again okay so there we have a ruling contract okay uh, one more thing is missing I think to get the new count that is the old count plus the plus one which is the default count inside of the count channel okay so to test this out we're gonna use the cryptofx IDE to see if there are any errors so I'm just gonna copy this and paste this in run that now good we don't have any error so our code a smart contract is correct to spin up a standalone node where we'll be able to deploy our Roland contract to so we have our node run dash s which means standalone or the standalone flag dash n the no UPnP flag and then um you need a copy of your private key now there is a no testing sheet um, a spreadsheet that holds a lot of private keys so I have one written there when you run a standalone node for the first time it should generate um, about five private key files so you could get a private key from there also so since I have one here, I could just easily use that. So I have dash validator private key. And then paste in the private key and run that. So we can have we can see the node standing up. So right there on the screen now you can see created validator about five times. So those are five different validator private keys or five different files that hold validator private keys that you could use so the next thing I'm gonna do is to CD into the projects folder so I have CD rolling project CD and color row file I have our node deploy and color dot row so that's a success so we're having a success okay so we could see the deploy at the bottom so what we're going to do now is to create an integration test say integration does row that should help us to test for the contracts we've written so we're going to create a send for game ID and number on the nth color factory Let's create new channels that has the name of the game and acknowledgement channel and a standard a standard out acknowledge which which should print to uh, that should be acknowledged yeah A message in the standard out acknowledge that should tell us in my game that should call the winner of the game David wins so in this game we want David to be the winner and then we should also send acknowledge as a process inside of this 
to do a send on the nth color factory of the game ID. That's what I have nth color factory. My game. Now remember, we're quoting because my game is already a name, so we're using the asterisk to quote it into a process. So we could do a send. And then we're sending also the number that should be called, meaning that David will have to be the second caller to win the game. Okay, we'll have to listen for a new message and acknowledgement for the first caller. And then, in order for us to achieve a first, second, third order, it means we'll have to nest each color inside the other because ruling is concurrent by nature so for us to achieve a first second third call we'll have to nest it if we were to do it without the nesting it means that ruling would treat each or each of the calls are going to happen at the same time okay so we're going to do my game now we're doing a send for the my game or the game ID contract. Now we're saying my game, which is uh, game ID in this case, Valentine. Acknowledge. So we're making Valentine to be the first caller. Then we want the response to be sent or to be received on the acknowledgement channel. The results to be received on the acknowledgement channel. And also, we want it to be printed to stand it out, acknowledge. We want the results and then acknowledgement to be printed. Remember, we said David, we said the second caller should win, and also we, earlier we wanted David to win, so we're gonna make David the second caller. We're going to do exactly the same thing that we did in the first case. I'm going to say my game, David, acknowledge, okay, let me make this a little bit better so it could be readable. I'm going to say for results, acknowledge. Standard out, acknowledge the results, the results, and also acknowledge. Then we'll do for the third person, for third caller, my game. Let's say the third caller, that's Daisy. Acknowledgement, and we're doing a four re results on the acknowledgement channel, and also printing the results and acknowledgement. Okay, so this is a little integration test. Okay, we're gonna deploy this now to our nodes we're going to deploy the integration test integration that row you're getting a success then we'll check out our node and yes we can see a receive deploy so let's move straight to our text editor and create a new file index.html so create a, a html file now so doc type the tag sign HTML to so have okay um for page title we want that to be and or demo our chain App. Also, want that to be app.js rather than main.js. 
inside our body we're going to do a paragraph that says nth color game be the correct color we're going to create a H1 body tag for to register a game and say register a new game say game ID and then do an input for the game ID and separate that into I'm gonna say imputes with an ID of new game ID a type of text okay I'm gonna say winning color imputes and an ID of N, which is the number that should be called, and a type of number. Okay, I'm going to create a button for an ID of register. register button okay we're gonna say use tricks and then grab all the data as soon as the web page loads so we say document add event listener Dom loaded Then an error function. That should be comma. To so say let our new game ID be equal to the document. Um, now I want to get the ID of the of the new game. Let me separate that also. So we say the document add event listener. Oh sorry we are supposed to say get elements by ID not add event listener. So we're gonna get the new game ID And also want to get n, which is the number. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to say document get elements by id and then n. Okay. Now we're going to impute our client JS script inside of our index.html file. So we're going to say document get element by ID for register add event listener. We're adding an event listener to for the register button. So on click, it should call the register function. Any of this any longer? So what we want to do now is to write the function, the register function. So we say function register uh, 
Let's say, um, firstly, I want to validate the ROM, the, uh, from the browser or from the fields we have in the browser. So we we'll say if new game ID the value equal to null and end the value equal to null. Then we should log to the console a message that says game ID and winning color are required. No game is registered. Okay, then a return. So this is just to validate that we're getting data from our browser. Then we're going to say let body be equal to an object of ID, new game ID, the value, and n, which is a number, equal to parse integer and the value 10. Now we're going to grab the data from the browser. I would say make post register. That should be body. Now I'm saying that then data our function console.log data that message new game ID that value and then we're returning the value to null after we've sent the message so we're going to create a new function function make post with parameters of route and body we're saying let requests be equal to an object of method posts headers an object also except application slash json and content type also application slash json okay we're gonna say body now um, is json Let's stringify that is I'm gonna send a message as a, as a JSON and then return. Return fetch routes request then dot then promise of a response return response.json next thing we're going to do now is to create our server file which is app.js i'm also going to say use strict in case you're not familiar with the use strict you could do a google search you could do a google search of that now we're going to um, require all the dependencies we installed earlier we'll say const express equal to require require express now we require body parser also
and we require grpc and finally we we'll require the rchain api now what we do for this is to require our node and rule core set that to require our chain api so we'll grab in our node and rule core from our chain api module okay having set up our dependencies now we're going to set up our connection save our hosts process that argument we're setting that to local host now we're having our ports a grpc port Say process. Send that to forty four o one, which is at the four GRPC port. Now having our UI port. That should be three. Same process. The arguments are listening on port eighty eighty. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is to configure the Express app and our node connection. Save our my node equals to our node. GRPC host and port and var express var app equal to express then app use body parser the JSON app use express that static directory name okay um, now we're going to start the express app and let me write some comments here this is setup host and ports this is setup express app and our nodes connection and then start express app so say after listen for UI ports this will console.log a print to the console that um, Game app service started. Oops, this should be game app started. This should be strings. And let's say another console message connected to our node. at the host port hosts oops this should be back ticks yeah back ticks host and um, ports
uh, and finally we should print to the console the last message that says started on UI port okay this is okay to start application now we're gonna handle registration of new games we say app.posts register the requests and response an error function Gonna say let code be equal to the nth color factory. What we're doing here is an actual send, just similar to the send that we did in the integration, the integration that row file. So we're saying um nth color factory and we're sending name of the game request dot body dot id this there should be backward ticks yeah and um requests dot body dot n what says um, number to be called and we're gonna say let deploy data be equal to term code timestamp new date The value value of to so create a timestamp for edge deploy. Now we're gonna say my node dot do deploy and a bracket deploy data then a promise dot then result and an R function. Now here we're going to make R node to create a block. Let me add a comment. Let's say make R node create a block. So say return my node dot create block and then a promise. Dot then results an error function again. Now we we'll send a JSON response to so say res dot response dot end JSON dot stringify message results. The dot catch. Oops, we said that. Console dot log. The error. So that's it for our server. I'm gonna take out the excess braces we have here. Now we're missing one one brace. Let's see which isn't closed yet. We we'll have this. Okay, we're missing a brace, an opening brace, I believe. Okay, we don't have one here. 
That should be an open embrace. Yeah. Okay, so we're set for our servo. Okay, we'll, we'll check for errors. Check our client JS file also. Um, oops, this should be a set. Yeah, we'll check every file we have to see if we're getting any errors. So we'll open up our terminal and then cd into the projects folder. If we should start using nodes, then each time we have to run our, uh, each time we make changes to the application, we'll have to kill the node and restart again. But um, it would be best we use nodemon. Nodemon automatically refreshes the server for you. So I have Nodemon installed. What to install that? You say npm dash g Nodemon. I already have that installed, so I'm gonna cut this out and do Nodemon app.js. And yes, we have our application running. So what we have to do now is move to localhost 8080. Then we can see our application. Then open up our console yeah we'll get an error I think require is not defined uh, that should be an error with our um, index.html yeah we're serving the server file you're not supposed to serve your server file you're only supposed to serve your client file so yep the error is gone so we're entering a game, say my game, and a number. Oops, we're getting a post uh, 500 error. Okay, let's see if there's any hints as to the error here. Uh, let's check what Nodemon is saying. Yeah, so Nodemon is telling us that deploy data is not defined. Okay, so let's go to our source code and uh, app.js deploy data. Um, yeah, so we misspelled that. That should be deploy data. I think that should solve the problem. So node more automatically refreshes. So we re enter that. Hey, soccer. Register that. Think that worked so we'll go back to and yes we could see that we've successfully deployed the game from our browser side so it's saying the block creator has weight zero that should be an issue with the standalone node we have created um yeah so having an invalid and slashable block what i'm gonna do now is attempt to create to connect to a cloud, a cloud node that is robot.net at Colab we have a, a cloud, a node running on a cloud machine uh, robot.net so I'm gonna attempt connecting to that node so we'll do a tail dash f of our log file Nodemon automatically refreshes. So enter my game. The winning color. So once we check a node here, we could see the deploy and the block added on a robot.net. So yes, that works. Now we're no longer getting the invalid on flash on slashable block or the block weights error because the node here is running just fine. So what we're gonna do now is to, to call the contract and try to win. So we're gonna say play an existing game. And we'll do almost the same thing as to what we did with the register new game. 
we're gonna say game ID so that imputes with an ID call game ID type of text And then your name, which is the name of the person, imputes ID for name type texts. And then we're going to have a button with an ID an ID of call and then a, a paragraph an ID of status okay so move over to a client.js file and add to add the um, IDs we just added to our index.html file for the files the, the IDs to be grabbed so we have call game ID and we'll say document the get element by ID say a call game ID then we say let name get elements by id document the get elements by id say name i would say finally let results key documents dot get element by id status and then we'll add another event listener say document dot get element by id call this time around and we add event listener on click call the call function so now we're going to create a call function so we're going to say function call now we're going to validate the, f the data also like with D the previous time we're going to say if Call game ID the value is equal to null or empty. Then she print to the console.
that game ID is required. And no call made or no call was made and do return now the next thing we're going to do similar to the register function is to set up our requests we're going to say let body be equal to ID of call game ID dot value and name name dot value. Then we're going to send the request and the same make posts call body then do a dot then of data error function then we say see what uh, we're going to check if we get if we're getting any data then we'll say if there is no data it should print to the console A message that says no such game found else it should do a result p dot in a HTML of data dot message okay I think that's that for the client dot js gonna handle users or handle players call it in call in the winning number or calling the number to win. So we say app dot posts call requests response. An error function. I'm going to say let's act um, be equal to math random the string Then a six and then substring seven. Mm, think we're missing something. Oh, might that be? Think we're missing our opening brace here. 
Yeah, so that's it. We're missing an opening brace. And so I'm gonna say let's code. Be equal to the game ID that is the name of the game it's similar to what we did earlier with the end color factory so we're gonna say at requests a body dot ID Send okay. Remember, we're, we have a, a contract for game ID that listens for a person's name and the result. So, we're gonna do I'm going to do a send for the name. So we say a request dot body dot name. And then the, the acknowledgement process. The acknowledge. And also say let's deploy data be equal to term like we did the last time, term code timestamp. New date dot value of then I say my node dot do deploy. Then say deploy data and the promise dot then an error function Let's return my node now we'll have to get the our node to create a block, so say my node create block. And the then once again. And um, there should be an error function. Return and say get the data from our node. We're going to try to get data from our node to say my node dot listen for data at name say dot then block results
another R function. And I say um, if block results. It should be a dot length. If this is equal to zero, you'd have a response dot end. As JSON, say JSON dot stringify. A success false. Return that. Now we'll try to grab the last message that was sent. So we we'll say var last block is equal to block results dot slice. Minus one dot pop and var last datum to last block dot post block data dot slice dot pop you also want that to be JSON so we say res dot end as JSON JSON dot stringify We're gonna say success True Say row core to row lang last datum um, oops there should be a message somewhere there should be a message before the rule core, so say message rule core, yes, got that. So we're gonna do the dot catch once again. Oops, error function. Then we'll say console.log. Error. Okay, so I think we're having excess braces. Um, not having any errors, that's good news. So yeah, we're not having any errors either in our client.js. Okay, all our files seems to be in other, so we'll go to a browser, refresh. I'll have plain existing game, so say enter a game and a game number. 
Yeah, we should see that in our log. And try to play an existing game. Let's say, name of the game and David Cole. So check that. And there we can see soccer, the name of the game, and David, which is the color, right there in our log. So we've successfully communicated with our R node from our JavaScript client side interface. The final thing I would like to show you before we'll call it a day is how to deal with the invalid and slashable block error or the validator weights error. So now I'm going to open up my terminal and um, stop any instance of node, R node stop. Um, system control stop our node then my password Okay, now I'm gonna CD into the our node folder and CD into the Genesis folder also Then what you can see on the screen now as our public keys So each of these public keys are stored inside the bond text file and they contain private keys that you could use so I'm just going to grab a private key from one of this public key. Let's take the first one. So what you can see now is the private key. I'm going to copy that. And then start a new instance of our node in standalone mode using the private key that we just copied. So I'm going to paste that in now. Okay, then start up the node. Okay, so now if we should deploy or propose a block, um, pro propose a contract to this, we won't get or be getting the weight of zero error. So I'm going to CD into the projects folder and then deploy, Arnold deploy, the nth color row file. and then do a propose so now if you check your node log you should see that the block was successfully created there you have it we've just successfully created a decentralized application on the our chain platform yes although the application is quite simple but it is often the simple things that give birth to the greater things now this is I'm once again inviting you to join Colab. We have our Rolang and Arnold work study sessions every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Mondays at 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. GMT. The Zoom room you could see on your screen on your screen is the address of the Zoom address for our work study sessions. It will be so so wonderful to have you come around and join us. Now we're gonna be turning out other wonderful videos and tutorials that could help you become better at writing rolling contracts, running our nodes, becoming a validator on the our chain network and um, other technologies. So, so please make sure you like the video and drop your comments in the comment section. Till next time, I'd say it's a goodbye from me and um, I hope to hear from you soon.